<clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I'd like to shed light um, upon an aspect of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his relationship to his daughter, his daughters, in relationship to his daughters, and his attitude, his reliance on Allah, his attitude, and um, so let's get straight to it. Okay. So the. <clears throat> The first hadith I'm going to read to you, by the way, this narration is Rawatibrani, okay? And Qala Hashami Rajunuhu Thiqat, meaning this is a very, very authentic. Uh, all the people in this chain of narrations are are strong, are heavy. Thiqat, very heavy, heavyweight, so you can say. So, <clears throat> the narrator is narrating about a time where he was not yet Muslim and he was with his dad. An Hadith bin Hadith qala kuntu li abi. He said, I was with my father. Ma hadihil jama'ah. And he saw the Prophet and some people around him and he said, Ma hadihil jama'ah. What is this gathering over here? Qala ha ula'i qawmi qad ijtama'u ala sabi lahum. And the father replied, oh, these people, uh, you know, they have come together with this heretic, this person who's like an outlaw amongst them. So he said, So they came to a place, they came to a place and they could see the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal ila tawheed allahi azza wa jal wal iman bi and to believe in him wa hum yurudduna ilayhi wa hum yurudduna ilayhi and they were responding to him and they were arguing with him wa yu'duna hu and they were hurting him saying painful things like Allah even says, you know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّ يُضِيقُ صَدْرَكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ O Prophet of Allah, we know they say things that shrink your heart because of what they say. And, وَلَتُسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَذَنْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا وَمِنَ الْأَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا You will definitely have to hear from the people of the book and the people that do shirk, very pain, painful things, hurtful things, you will hear from them. You will definitely hear these hurtful things. So, يَدْعُونَ النَّاسِ إِلَىٰ تَوْحِيدِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَإِيمَانِ بِي وَهُمْ يُرُدُّونَ إِلَيْهِ وَيُؤْذُونَ بِهِ حَتَّى انْتَصَفَ Until they left. النَّهَارِ In the noontime, in the daytime. وَانْصَدَعَنْهُ النَّاسِ <clears throat> and so the people they left the Prophet وسلم, because it was uh, they left him at the midday. And as this was happening, and as the Prophet was spending his time talking to the people, trying to convince them, and they're insulting him, and all this is happening, فَأَقْبَلَتِ امْرَأَةٌ So a woman came. بَذَا نَحْرُهَا And her neck was showing. فَتَحْمِلُ she was carrying a cup and a napkin. The napkin is to wipe the sweat and the water is to drink and to do wudu as you will see. So the Prophet ﷺ drank from it and then he took it he took it and he um, he did wudu with it. ثُمَّ رَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ Then he raised his head. And by this meaning, raised his head, looking at her. And the father now, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, is saying to his daughter, يَبْنُتِ يَبْ يَبْنُتُ خَمْرِ إِلَيْكَ نَحْرِكَ Oh my dear daughter, please cover your neck. So he didn't immediately like, you know, just snap at her. Hey, you're not covering your neck, right? This is in Makkah. 
and he spent his whole day calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have been frustrated from the insults they were giving him, the difficulty they were giving him. He could have just snapped at her and said, hey, why are you not even covering your... But look at the daughter here, okay? Which daughter? I will tell you. The daughter is seeing that my dad is tired, he's being insulted, but he brings her, she brings him water and a napkin to wipe himself. And wipe himself after wudu also. So he said, It is on you to cover your neck. So how nicely and patiently he said it, but he had to say it. He's the Prophet of Allah. Then, Don't be in fear regarding your father. He'll be okay. So here is Rasulullah assuring his daughter, that he'll, look, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, don't worry about me, right? So it was said, who was that woman? Who was that, who was, which daughter? قَالُوا زَيْنَبْ إِبْنَتُهُ His daughter, Zainab. It was his daughter, Zainab. This event is about Zainab, right? And this tells you a lot about the Prophet's character, how he was dealing with the insults, how much he trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he had the character that he is now reassuring his own daughter. He understands her fears. He understands what she's going through, right? And and how scary it is for her to see that her dad's going through this. And at the same time, uh, he has that loving nature where he's assuring her, don't fear for me, it's okay. But he is also teaching her what he was sent to teach and he's telling her look cover your neck keep your modesty make sure your your modesty is intact at all times and of course this is early maki days the hijab the ayat of hijab have not even been revealed and the second event i'd like to share with you which is Rawa ahmed and uh other people have narrated this and sayyidin al-khudri radiyallahu an ibn abbas a group of the leadership of Quraysh, they had gathered on this place called Hajar. Hajar is this semicircle wall that is in front of the Kaaba. That whole area is called Hajar. And they made a promise with Lat and Uzza and uh, and Manat, the third one. لو قد رأينا محمد, if we now, all of us, any of us, if we see Muhammad, فقمنا إليه قيام رجل واحد. We will stand over him as one people, meaning we will kill him as one people, because we will. Have, all the tribes that are there, they all take the blame. Yes, we all did it, and the sh the blood will be shared amongst all of us. Okay. And we won't leave this place till we kill him. So Fatima heard this and now she goes to her father crying. Right? Your people have been gathered in that place called Hajar, where that semi wall is, right? And they made a promise. They made a promise if they see you, they're going to kill you. And there's not one amongst them except he knows his portion of your blood. Meaning, when they kill the Prophet, they're going to say, Well, we're sorry we killed him, but we have to give blood money. This was their tradition in the olden days. And they were ready to do that. So the Prophet, again, in the first case, what did he do? Before telling his daughter, don't fear for your dad, he did wudu. Same thing he tells Fatima here. Now Fatima is crying. Now you can imagine, this is a moment where the Prophet is not hurt for himself, but he's hurt for his daughter. And so you can see now what the Prophet does. He says to her, okay, bring me wudu water. So she brings the water to the wudu. يَبْنَتُ أَذْنِي وَضُوعًا فَتَوَدَّعَ ثُمْ 
So he did wudu. And in that state of wudu, he enters that masjid. That same masjid where the people are still sitting there that have promised to kill him. فَتَوَدْعَا ثُمَّ دَخَلَ إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَسْجِدَ And he enters the Masjid Al-Haram, meaning Mecca, in, in the in the Kaaba area. فَرَأَوْهُ So they saw him. قَالُوا هُوَ هَذَا هُوَ هَذَا He's the one, he's the one. فَخَفَضُوا أَبْصَارُهُمْ But what happened? Their eyes stayed down, lowered. وَأُرْ وَعُقِرُوا فِي مَجَالِسِهِمْ They became still, stiff in their sittings where they were sitting. وَلَمْ يَرْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِ أَبْصَارُهُمْ And they couldn't raise their eyes towards the Prophet. وَلَمْ يَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ رَجُلٌ None of them stood up. Instead, فَأَقْبَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Prophet came to them. صلى الله عليه وسلم حَتَّى قَامَ عَلَىٰ رُؤُوسِهِمْ Until he was on top of their heads. فَأَخَذَ قَبْدَةً مِّن تُرَابٍ he, he took from his... He then went to the ground and grabbed some dust. Okay. قَالَ وَقَالَ And the Prophet said, شَحَةِ الْوُجُوهِ May your faces be deformed. And he threw that. And then the narrator says, فَمَا أَصَابَتْ رَجُلٌ مِّنْهُمْ حَصَاءَةً إِلَّا قُتِلَ يَوْمُ الْبَدْرِ كَافِرًا There was not one amongst them that the, the dirt had reached him except he was killed on the day of Badr. The Prophet ﷺ did wudu and went out to show his daughter that Allah is protecting me. And so, you know, daughters uh, and fathers have an interesting, interesting relationship, right? Fathers are willing to do anything to protect their daughters. And the crying of a daughter, the hurt and the pain of a daughter, really hurts a father. And you can see that in the way the Prophet ﷺ, outside his normal way of behaving, his not his normal, his, not his normative behavior, he does wudu and goes out and confronts those people that had promised to kill him, to tell his daughter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has my back. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sure that I'm protected. And so I just wanted to share these two narrations to you in order to show you not only how the Prophet ﷺ, how much he trusted Allah, of course, but also how much he cared about the feelings of his daughter, his daughters. And in this case, it was Fatima. In the previous case, it was Zainab. And he had to reassure both of his daughters that I'll be okay because they were really worried for him. And that tells you what type of man he was, what type of father he was. That, you know, it wasn't like he had daughters who didn't care for him. These were daughters who really cared and loved for their, they had love for his dad. They believed in their dad, right? And the Prophet was uh, concerned about their feelings. And, you know, Fatima was young and she grew up seeing this trauma, you know, and Zainab is also seeing this. The daughters are growing up seeing this trauma and the Prophet ﷺ is trying to console them and trying to uh, heal them and trying to reassure them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, protect me. So anyway, I just wanted to share this hadith. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا